Well, there's... Do you voluntarily consent to the recording and publication of this video? Yes. <laughs> yes? I don't know. Yes. What's your name? Anna Sergeevna Svereva. I won't read it. I believe you. Date of birth? April 25th, 88th. Where are you from? Pokrovsk, Donetsk region. Clear. Yes. Yesterday they bombed Pokrovsk. I called my mom yesterday, she told me. Can you call home? Twice a week they allow calls. What else did your mom tell you about it? She says when the bomb went off, she didn't even have time to freak out. What were you convicted of? What was your offense? What was it? I wrote in the 21st year, in late fall, somewhere in November. The man, whom I do not know, introduced himself as Oleg, said that we met a year ago, it turns out in the 20th year. He is from the town of Mernograd, 10 minutes from me. Mernograd. We met and I asked him for his picture to see who he was. However, he didn't answer. He stopped answering. Maybe we did know each other. Because my husband and I were at odds at the time, and there were different companies and people around, and I was cheating on him. Okay. First time. No, really, maybe we already knew each other. Then he asked me to help him, and I asked, how? And he replied that he needed to photograph a couple of buildings for his job. He said it was for work and I agreed to take a picture. Did you ask him what his job was? No. I wasn't even interested. I see. I consulted with my husband in the kitchen, told him I'd been offered a job. I agreed not to waste time, besides, I was paid 200 hryvnias. So he paid you money right away? It's so I don't waste my time. That's right. And why would I waste my time, I could spend it with my family. Plus, he's some obscure person without a picture. Yes. Did you realize why he wanted those pictures? No. No? We in Pokrovsk from the 14th year the war did not touch us at all, we did not know what war was. I had no idea that it was for the war, he never told me in his correspondence that it was for the war. You must have had some contact with this man. No, he just texted me to take a picture of the bridge this weekend, I went and took a picture and sent it off. Then for a week or two nobody called me or wrote anything, only when they had to. That made seven objects. Only seven objects? Yeah, I can list it. Let's. Social security building. Two bridges. Hospital. Airfield, but the file said airport. Railway station. Power plant. I was told to take pictures of the holes in the fence, which I did. Strategic sites. I didn't think it was for war and that they were strategic sites. We lived without war, but we heard the siren for the first time. What's that? They explained why photographing holes in the fence. No. To get through the holes? I don't know, no one told me what the pictures were for. I went around with my husband like a fool and took pictures. Okay, I get it. My file says he's military. Your husband? No, this man. Is that the one? He introduced himself as Oleg, and in fact Skomoroka Alexander Viktorovich, if I am not mistaken. However, he introduced himself to me as Oleg. You do realize that not everyone who presents themselves as someone is that someone. We've been duped. If you knew, how much would you ask? I wouldn't ask, I'd just stay out of it. But you want to go to Russia for the exchange? I don't want to be in jail for anything in my country. When they take you away, 
will you go to Putin and say that you want there to be peace? That they stop shooting, throwing these missiles at Ukraine? Will you do that? Ah, uh, sure. It's okay. You're valuable. You're a very valuable character. I want peace. Sverova Anna Sergeevna, April 25, 88th year, Article 110, Part 2, Complicity in Changing the Borders of Ukraine. Please pick me up in exchange. Last name, first name, middle name, date and place of birth. Kleshenikova Natalia Ivanovna, September 10, 68th, Donetsk region, former Alexandrovsky district, now Kramatorsky district, village Idarovsko. Do you voluntarily consent to the recording and publication of this conversation? Yes. What were you convicted of? What article? What does it mean? And tell your whole story. I have Article 111, 1, Part 7. When SBU came to me and called this article, I didn't understand it. When I read in the SIZO that I had surrendered our positions to the enemy, I didn't understand a thing. I should have gotten a lesser sentence and a lesser article for that. How many years? Twelve. Bomb the locations you named? What I called, it's never been bombed. It happened once, I still don't agree with it, my lawyer told me that I could challenge it, but I didn't challenge it and wasted time. We discussed school, but there was information on the internet that it's better to say less unnecessary things on the phone because they're bugged. As the saying goes, all troubles have one beginning, a woman sat bored. I wondered if there really was a wire and someone was listening in on all my conversations. Out of curiosity, I took one picture and forwarded it. In addition, I asked, are these lightning rods or antennas so peculiar? That was in September, and that place was bombed on January 19th. We had the military there all summer, if I wanted to turn them in, I would have turned them in right away. I would say that the military were there, but at the time of the bombing, there was no one there. Besides, the shell did not hit the school, but the sports field next to it. Nevertheless, I was aggressively charged that it was my doing. In fact, I chatted about this topic in September. I understand and listen to your side of the story. Yes. There is the prosecution's version. There's the prosecution's version. I'm not even arguing, although I think I'm not entirely in agreement here. What do you think about what is happening from your point of view? I think it's about time we start agreeing on what to do so that fewer people die. That's typical. For both sides. Yes, of course. You know, there used to be a Tatar-Mongol horde? I remember that. How did they act? Honestly, I don't remember. It's a story. Let's just say I can't adequately articulate my thoughts regarding this topic right now and respond. Because I've had nine surgeries in my time and some things I've simply forgotten. It is not my purpose to test your knowledge of history. The Tatar-Mongol yoke. Here they are running, plundering, burning, destroying and seizing everything in their path. They don't ask anything, from anyone. If some territory bows to them and agrees to pay tribute, they issue a label about payment of tribute, and only in this way it is possible to come to an agreement with them. It's just that Russia now is a bit, or rather entirely, like this horde that just takes and invades other people's territory. Here is Russia going and going and going on foreign soil for as long as it can until it is physically repulsed. What is there to negotiate with them? How do we make a deal? I'm not a military strategist, but I believe that for the sake of the lives of the military and civilian people who are dying right now, even if we think Russia is wrong, we need to at least stop it, and then we'll see, that's my opinion, it was before the arrest, that's why I'm here. Before then and now, 
my opinion hasn't changed because it's been a year since virtually everything has been in the same place. Am I wrong? Six months. I've been here for six months and don't know any new news. So Russia doesn't move, and Ukraine can't retake it, and people don't stop dying, on both sides. The most frustrating thing is that these are civilians and children. Uh, sure. I still think we should come to an agreement. I am not saying that Ukraine should retreat and capitulate. You yourself realize that this will not stop, because it is someone's interests, it is someone's business. Wars are always business. Why? Do you think Russia should abandon its occupation intentions? Even if I voiced and said this, then the territory of Russia, Putin and the military command would not listen to me. The same as Zelensky. You see, there are big. I'm not saying that Putin will hear you. It's clear. Natalia Ivanovna. Of course, if so, then yes. I understand you. I want to understand your point of view. My view is purely human, that as long as there are weapons, as long as someone produces them and someone needs to make money from it, this war will not stop. If people understand and stop buying weapons and fighting, then something might happen. Russia will never stop. Maybe it will stop at some point. There will always be guns. Always. For the foreseeable future. It won't be here, it'll be somewhere else. It always does. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't want it to be like that, but it's not up to us. The phenomenon of people with your views is that even if you don't support Russia, you still don't call them occupiers, and still somehow you try to justify yourself. I'm not making excuses. Let's be honest. Isn't that an excuse? Look, they invaded our territory. Missiles, bombs, assassinations, tanks, all of it combined. And instead of just saying they are occupiers, they need to stop military operations, you say you know, it's not so clear cut. Somebody has some interests there. You know, I can't say everything that I think sometimes, because as a person of faith, I think that you have to negotiate. I. This is exactly what I'm talking about now, not because I'm justifying Russia, but because I, as a person of faith, am a believer. I do not condone murder on either side. Do you understand? Are you Orthodox? Yes. Orthodox Christian? Yes. I suspect the Moscow Patriarchate. I was baptized in the Moscow Patriarchate, so if I don't have the opportunity to go to the temple that is mine, I won't go anywhere. That's how things are. Now I want to find you a quote. I saw it recently and I'm trying to understand it now. So you can just tell me what you think about it. In Ukraine, the disease is so neglected that no amount of persuasion, negotiation, or anything can cure anything there. Only surgery is possible there. So the answer to these performances can only be one thing sunshine. This needs to be burned out. This is the Orthodox TV channel, Spas. I can't tell you exactly what the speaker's name is. You see. Father Yevgeny Nikifarov is the director of the Orthodox radio, Radonas. There is no way to cure this, only surgery is possible. Therefore, the answer to these Nazi speeches can be one thing sunshine. This needs to be burned out. Absolutely. This is quite Christian. Can you not turn it on anymore? They position themselves as pagans. I never listened to that. Must receive punishment like pagans. Do you realize this is your church? Our church. But there are also many of us in Ukraine. Do you know why I will not go to the Church of the Kiev Patriarchate? Yes, because I consider Philaray to have apostatized from the faith. And then there was Thomas. That's my opinion. But it's the same in the Moscow Patriarchate. Everything is not so smooth here, not everything is so good. 
If I went into a temple and heard a priest say that, I would never come to that temple again, you know? I have no right to judge him, because I didn't make the priest, nor did I appoint him, but I wouldn't go there. What about if you're ordaining officer? Cyril is in charge? Cyril. Basically, he's saying all the same things, in softer terms, but the same thing. Again, there are temples in Russia that do not obey him in principle. How can it be? He's the patriarch. The patriarch, there are priests, we had one as well. For example, to give you an example, there was Father Seraphim in the Svitogorsk Lavra, he was quite insightful and intelligent elder. And not everything he taught was liked by those who are more important than him. And here too, you know, if I'm baptized by the Moscow Patriarchate, it doesn't mean I accept everything. Let's say they would say, I'm a bad Christian, so. That's what you said, of course. I'm telling you, what you showed is usually Kachov talking. I think a lot of people take offense to him. He says a lot of very clever things too good and useful. But there are some thoughts like that. So it goes something like this. Overall and in general. It will be very difficult for you to find a temple for yourself in Russia, because that's the way it is there now. Anyway, I know a temple. We often went on pilgrimages, before the war, before the year 2014. I was very sick, and with the help of the trips I started to get back on my feet a little bit. I know a temple that, probably more than one. And there are good temples in the Synaxaria, where the Batyashki. Do you have anything to say for yourself? I can't wait for this exchange to happen, because it's going to be very difficult for me here. A colony is a colony, so there's no. That's understandable. If it's good there, everyone will say, we'd rather stay in the colony. No, I'm referring to my medical condition. I sympathize with your state of health, but please tell me if you understood the risks of your actions, would you repeat them? No, that's for sure. I am Kleshevnikova Natalia Ivanovna, born on September 10, 1968. Before imprisonment I lived in Donetsk region, Kramatorsk district. My article is 111, 1, part 7. I ask to be taken for exchange because my health condition is not very good. I'm just going to have a really hard time here. Do you have relatives in Russia? I have a son. In Russia, did you pee? Yes. Would you like to trade? Yes. Shall we talk about it? Yes. The video will be recorded and posted, okay? Posted by where? On YouTube, on my channel. My name is Vladimir Zolkin, my channel is called exactly the same. Makarova Nelia Georgievna. Date of birth? December 27th. 1972nd year. Where are you from? From Donetsk. What's your article and sentence? 114, part 3, 8 years, espionage. What were you watching? Points. What points? Techniques and weapons. Did you do it on purpose? No. How much money did you get? Zero. You don't have a material benefit? No. Did you plead guilty? Yes. Was there a contract? No. If you plead guilty, they say you did it willfully. You don't agree with that? Let it be willful. No, you don't understand. Let it be what it is. Tell me why you did it. Why you went and tracked these points. I didn't keep track, I knew them. Because it was all around me. What city? I've been channeling from Telegram what's going on in the city. What city? Kramatorsk. So you were getting information from the telegram feed and passing it on? Yes. Where to? To an FSB officer. Did he say who he was? No. And how did he introduce himself? He said he was Russian. Military? Yes. You deliberately handed over the locations of our military to the Russian military? Yes, it is. Then what are you telling me? Uh, okay. How many episodes do you have? How many points do you have that you reported? Seven. What are these dots? Let's do the math. Warehouses, weapons, headquarters. 
and five more. There's two warehouses, or three warehouses, and an airfield. Everybody knew about the airfield. Everybody wrote for it. Why would you do that? There could have been gunfire. Yes. It says in your sentence that something flew somewhere after you. No, it says there have been no incoming flights, no casualties. Clearly, there's no material benefit either. Yes. Did you do it for free? Yes. Why would you do that? Now I realize it's silly, but at the time. The best supporter of Russia. Now you realize it's stupid, why? Because it didn't need to be. You didn't need it? Yes. At the same time you love Russia a lot and dislike Ukraine. I won't say I'm a big fan. But I'm more in favor of. A supporter of Russia, why? I lived in Russia. I had Russian citizenship. When the war started in 2014, I lived in Donetsk. I was born in Donetsk. Why did you leave? I came to visit my mother in Kramatorsk. She got sick with COVID-19. I stayed there because then the war started. COVID-19 came later. I came to see my mother not in 2014, but in 2018. Okay. Why is Russia bombing Ukraine? What? Why is Russia bombing Ukraine? Russia wants to seize territory. Why would they do that? I don't know that. They don't have enough territory? No. Any unpopulated areas? Yes. Are there a lot of non-gasified areas? Yes, Siberia. Russia has a large territory and something to do on it. Why do they need Ukrainian territory? Only the president of Russia knows that. Um, you came to visit your mother in Kramatorsk during the COVID-19 epidemic and stayed there, correct? Yes. You couldn't leave? The borders were closed, and it was expensive to return through Russia. What did you do in Kramatorsk? I was working. Where? I used to work in a beauty parlor. Are you a hairdresser? I was an administrator. You worked as an administrator. So, in general, Ukraine sheltered you. In Ukraine, you were working in a beauty salon, earning money. Why did you decide to betray this country? Why did you decide to point missiles at us? The first reason is stupidity. Second, I'm more in favor of Russia. I get it. But if you support Russia, you should have gone to Russia. Why should Ukrainians die because you support Russia? It doesn't depend on my desire. But you were giving the enemy the location of Ukrainian soldiers. I did it because of my stupidity. You're saying that again. Would you do it again? No. What would you do? What would you do in this situation? I wouldn't do what I did again. You want to be traded? Makarova Nelia Georgievna, born 1972nd year. Article 114 Part 3, Espionage. I was a citizen of Russia, then I came to Ukraine. Now I want to be exchanged and return to Russia. I was sentenced to eight years in prison. I am registered in the city of Donetsk. Do you have relatives in Russia? Yes. Who? I have a daughter in Russia, and a house in the city of Armavir, which I inherited from my grandmother. What's your name? Moroz Irina Nikolaevna. Year of birth? December 1968. The city? Donetsk region city Belozersk. If you can, speak a little louder. All right. Would you be okay with our conversation today being recorded and published? I don't mind. What were you convicted of and what was your sentence? I was convicted under Article 114, Section 2. Five years and three months in prison. This article is a spiel. I wrote in the group the exact address of the place where the missile attack happened, and I also wrote about the fact that the three tanks that came to our town got lost and went there. I wrote that we had military exercises behind the hospital, which were not really there. I also wrote that there were snipers on the roof of the dormitory. I was convicted for that. 
Did you do it on purpose? I don't know how to tell you this. I didn't go around town and gather information or look up addresses specifically for this. I learned it all from the words of other people in our town. Did you realize that you were passing important data to the enemy? Yes. You knew. I'm a grown man. Did you realize that people could die because of this? A missile could fly there? Yeah, but that's what happened. I hadn't mm -hmm. thought of that. Wait, why are you making up some story now? No, it's true. You wanted those people to die. No, why would I want that? Do you support Russia? The reason for this was the killing of children in Donetsk. I read a story about children being killed in Donetsk. Have you checked this story for accuracy? No, I just read it on the internet. Are pro-Russian internet resources writing this? Yes. Are they interested in giving you that information? Yes. So what makes you think this is true information? Would you do it again if you knew what was going to happen? No. Did you realize that you could be prosecuted? No, honestly. I am Moroz Irina Nikolaevna, born in 1968. I live in Donetsk region, the city of Belizersky. Article 114, Part 2, Espionage in Favor of Russia. Five years and three months of imprisonment. I have relatives in Russia, my father was a Russian citizen. I ask you to help me return to Russia. My name is Vladimir, I am a journalist. We record videos of those who want to go to the prisoner of war exchange, so that those in Russia can see it and help them. We also publish these videos on YouTube. Do you mind? Why did you choose me? Why you? Yes. Can I put a microphone on you so you can be heard? All right. Can you take off your scarf? Thank you for letting me wear the microphone. I didn't pick you specifically, we're making videos with all comers. What are you convicted of? First of all, what is your name? Marina Nikolaevna Arohina. Year of birth? The year 1979. The city? Dobropilia, Donetsk region. Is Dobropoli occupied? No. Was it occupied? No. Can you please tell us why you were detained? Founder and organizer of a terrorist group. I didn't think and because of stupidity I told them where they were. Which is what? Location of roadblocks. How did you tell it? On the phone. Did you tell this to people from the so-called DNR? Yes. To whom? I told Ludmila. Who did she tell? As it turned out, Lyudmila is a servicewoman in the DNR. I found out about it later. She's a DNR soldier, you see. So this all happened for a reason. Do you support Russia? Yes. Why? Because I have seen a lot of bad things done by some people who support Ukraine. Because of that I support Russia. For example, territorial defense fighters sold humanitarian aid. Oh, really? Yes. Really? Yes. So they brought in humanitarian aid and sold it to the local population? Yeah, yeah. That's not good. That's not good. A woman was murdered once. What woman? It happened in Dobropilia. They hit her with a car and said that if we objected, they would do the same to us. Do you know that the Russians have the same thing going on? It's happening everywhere. It's war. Why are the Russians good then? I don't know. I haven't talked to them. I'm just talking about what I saw. Do you want to be traded? Yes. I am Arohina Marina Nikolaevna, born in 1979th year, city of Dobropilia, Donetsk region. I was convicted under Article 258, Part 1, founder and organizer of a terrorist group. I want to go to Russia. Do you want to be taken away? I'm asking you to take me away from here. Are you one of them? I think so. What do they do? They don't betray. What if they betray you? No. What were you sentenced to? Eight years. Eight years. How long has it been? More than one year.
Do you agree to the publication of the video of this conversation? I think videos of me have been published without permission. State your name, date of birth, and where you are from. I am Oksana Evgenievna Bertseva. 1985th year. Are you from Donetsk? Yes, I am registered in the city of Donetsk, but since 2008 year, I have lived in the city of Novorodovka. What's your article? 114, 2, part 2. Five years and three months. What's the article? In my sentence, it is written that I was convicted for disseminating information, which was not in the public domain, about the location and movement of the armed forces of Ukraine. You've been spreading information about Ukrainian troops. No, 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 no. You didn't do it? My understanding is that to disseminate data is to transmit it specifically to Russian servicemen. And what exactly did you do, publish the data? No. It's just that my friend from Donetsk and I have been discussing the war a lot. Did she do it? No, she didn't. How did your correspondence become available to the Ukrainian investigative authorities? People came to the mine. Most likely, they were SBU officers. They were massively checking the phones of all the people from the mine, all the workers. And in correspondence with your friend they found all the information about the whereabouts of Ukrainian servicemen? Not everything was there, but a lot. She was talking about Donetsk, and I was talking about Novogradovka. All right. Bertseva Oksana Evgenievna. Article 114, 2, second part. Five years and three months. I ask to be exchanged. 